We're going to be looking at a brief history of the kingdom of Israel. Now, I mean this uh, specifically, the northern kingdom of Israel. What do I mean by the northern kingdom of Israel? Well, in ancient times, Israel existed as a kingdom through the reign of King Saul, and then through King David, and then through King Solomon. Now, upon Solomon's death, the kingdom split in two. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But he kept not that which the Lord commanded. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God, and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove, and worshipped all the host of heaven, and served Baal. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel, and removed them out of his sight. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel, and afflicted them, and delivered them into the hand of Until spoilers, the Lord removed Israel out of, his sight, out of his sight, as he had said by all his servants the prophets. So was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. In the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria took Samaria, carried Israel away into Assyria placed them in Hala and in Habor by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes. Let God be true, but every man a liar. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoner out of their own lands in the time of Hosea the king, whom Solomon Asa, the king of Assyria, led away captive. And he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. So the land they came into was the land of the Assyrian captivity. Now watch this. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. That's the key. Where never mankind dwelt. That they might there keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. And they entered into Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. For the Most High then showed signs to them, and held still in the flood, till they were passed over. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half. So it tells you the amount of time it took them to get to a land where never mankind dwelt. A year and a half. And the same region is called Osir. Okay, the region of this land over here is called Osir. Okay. northern kingdom of Israel, which is Ephraim and the other tribes of Israel. How they got to this side of the world? Does Hollywood know? Does history bear witness that the native Indians on this side of the world are Israelites? Let's examine a movie called 1492. There is a third way. By sailing west across the ocean sea. 
The distance is unknown. It's said to be infinite. Superstition. I believe the Indies are no more than 750 leagues west of the Canary Islands. How can you be so certain? The calculations of uh, Toscanelli, Marin de Tir, Esdras. Esdras is a Jew. So what's worse? Two minutes, and already you're a dead man. For telling the truth? Yes. How can you be so certain? The calculations of uh, Toscanelli, Marin de Tir, Esdras. Esdras is a Jew. So what's worse? Two minutes, and already you're a dead man. For telling the truth? Yes. The writers of this uh, 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 screenplay, they put the writings of Esdras in the speech of Columbus. That's how Spain knew the Israelites were on this side of the world. By the writings of who? Esdras, the prophet Esdras. I'm going to show you that he was a Jew. I'm going to prove that to you. So this is from a book called, uh, I don't have the cover on, it's uh, Lost Tribes and Promised Lands. I'll get the author right now. Uh, by Ronald Sanders. Another good archaeological book. You know. Uh, let's go to page, um, let's go to page 75. So page 75. I want to prove to you that he's a Jew and he knew what he was doing. He knew where he was going. He wasn't just some damn dumbass how they portray him. He think thinking he was in India. He knew what he was doing. It's uh, so it says right here. Shit. It says right here. Um, the great Spanish statesman and historian Salvador de Madriaga has offered an audacious theory that, if correct, would not only resolve many of the contradictions. In the story of Columbus's origins and early life, but also explain a number of mysteries surrounding his late career. According to Madriaga's hypo hypothesis, Domenico Colombo of Genoa, his wife and their children were a family of new Christians, most likely descended from Catalan Jews. And Colombo was, which is his real name. Uh, there's, there's other records. There's other records. Um. It says, we have seen how a man of high expectations like Pedro de la Cavalieri, Salakia, Cavalleria tried to make the evidence of his, meaning Columbus's, Jewish descent disappear from the record. So they always, they, they just hide it. They, okay, this is a book called Christopher Columbus and the African Holocaust, Slavery and the Rise of Europe. So let's go to page um, 74. Book. Um, it says in chapter 6 Michael Bradley again alludes to the possible Jewish origins of Christopher Columbus and that the purpose now check this and that the purpose of his voyage had a mission 
extending beyond discovery and the search for gold. So he had a mission beyond that. He had a mission beyond that. Let's go to page 72. It says, in the previous chapter of this book, Michael Bradley states up a more dangerous issue. See, see they use that word dangerous? Dangerous issue. The issue deals with the possible Jewish input into New World Discovery and the medieval roots of inter it, internal religious conflicts in Europe affecting a segment of the Jewish population who might have disguised themselves as Catholics. It's like I said, the, the, Jew, the Catholics that came with the Christianity, they're really Jewish in, Jewish in disguise. So that, that points more theory, more evidence that Christopher Columbus was a no good Khazar, sent on a special mission. He was a damn devil. This book, Sales of Hope, Secret Mission of Columbus, page 172. It says, Why did Columbus take an Hebrew, an interpreter for Hebrew with him? Hebrew was not the language of any country in the known world. The only possible explanation must be that Columbus expected to be reaching countries in which Jews lived and governed. And that's exactly why he brought the Jewish interpreter. The fact that Columbus provided himself with an interpreter proves that he at least hoped to encounter Hebrew-speaking people. And that's the least of it. Believe me, he, the, he knew that he was going to encounter Hebrew Israelites on those islands that he was going to. Back to the book, Lost Tribes and Promised Land, page 92 of this book shows, uh, it says, We did not know much concerning Columbus's crew of about 90 men aboard the three ships, but at least one of them was an Israelite who, whose presence as such was not merely accidental. It says, it says he was... He was said to have known Hebrew, Aramaic, and some Arabic, and had been brought along by Columbus specifically as an interpreter. Specifically. I got this magazine. Really, it's not a kid's magazine. It maybe looked like a kid's magazine or whatever. But what kid's going to read 500 pages, right? This is really a magazine. And it's not like a magazine. that they, it's, it's cartoonish, like they draw pictures of it, of depicting it. But really, they have... um. What's it called? They have, uh, they get true documents like the ones from those books and they just put it in, input it in here. But they just make it look like a magazine basically. So this is page 135. This is really informative actually. Page 135, the Columbus Mystery. It says Cristobal Colon, which is his real name, Cristobal Colon, known not to us as Columbus, was by some evidence a Spanish Jew. For this reason, he decided to conceal his identity. Like I said, he concealed it to make him seem like he's a Christian Catholic. Also, he was in possession of several maps of Slakia. Also, he was in possession of several maps that showed the coasts of that showed the coasts and islands of North and South America. That's proving you that they, he knew what he was here for. He had the maps, he had the information. He was a high, he was um, he was an agent like I said man, he was sp sent on a special mission. He had the maps, he wasn't a damn idiot that just strolled on by and oh, I, I think this is India. And you know, it, so it says several crew members were Jewish including Bernal, the ship's doctor. Now there been more information on this. Um, several members crew members were jewish including bernal the ship's doctor and marco the surgeon abraham zacuto provided astronomical tablets with which saved the lives of cologne and his crew on the fourth voyage Now let's go to some more facts, some good facts. Uh, Sales of Hope again. 
by Simon Weisenthal. The Spanish ecclesiastic Raldin undertook to prove a common origin between the Jews and the between the Jews and the original inhabitants of America on the basis of linguistic evidence. He had studied the language of the Indians on Haiti, Levi, Cuba, Manasseh, and Jamaica, Benjamin, and the neighboring islands, and, the ma and maintained that it showed similarities to Hebrew. You got Levi, Benjamin, and Manasseh, and neighboring islands. So mostly all of Benjamin, Bermuda, Trinidad, all the West Indies islands, and other islands, probably uh, Puerto Rico, you know, Haiti, that's what he said. Uh, Dominican, so it's Simeon and uh, hey, and Levi. Uh, that's four tribes. That, that that's shit, man. Four birds with one stone. Shit. Uh, now we go to the deep, deep stuff. It says, The names Cuba and Haiti were to Rodin's mind of Hebrew origin. It says, um, Thus he argued the word Hanai, Hanai water came from the Hebrew Aim, spring. Jonas from Jonah, Yake from Jacob, Uries from Urias, Saibo from Seba, Masi, Masi from Mose. Uh The names of the of Indian tools of the narrow trails they use they use concess, the word axi for pepper, the word for a corn granary and for grain in general suggested kingship of with the Hebrew language. So it's all coming together. Here's more info from this magazine. Okay, um, page 438. This is on the Incas. This is good information. Now, this is, uh, what's it called? The Incas is uh, from Peru, Ecuador, places like that. Tribe of Asher, basically. Page 438. It says, therefore, Tupac Kari, which is a leader, commanded by law. Because basically they're talking about how this is how Incas um, communicated by these. It says wood cut from the Spanish conquest depicting the Quipu. Okay, that's how these. Because uh, they're basically the question is uh, uh, why did um, a civilization as advanced as the Incas, which had a great, you know, like they're just talking about how great the civilization and how advanced it was. Why didn't they have a written language? Why didn't they write? Well, because the white man came and destroyed their language. But before, they dig, they dig in how they had a language. So let's read. Montesinos is giving us the important information that the Incas and presumably other South American civilizations, the Incas did have a written language. And uh, I'm going to show you the written language. This is an inscription they found. And I'm going to show you some letters. Okay. Some they go off, some not. Look, this is the A. Ah. The A ah is in Hebrew. Right here, that's the A. Ah. Okay. Now, I'm just bring this over right here. Now, here's a Ka. Right here. As you see, that's a Ka. As you see right here. This is a car right here. Okay. Um, there's many ahs. I just, you know, uh, highlight them as many as possible. This right here is a ya. As you can see. The ya. See? Exactly the same. 
in the Hebrew language, ancient Hebrew. This is, I believe, Ba. No, this is the Ra. Um, I forgot the Ra. I'm ready right now. The Ra. Okay. Um. It's right here. Okay. The Ra. Uh, many more. You know. This is the A. Ah. Right here. The O. It looks like an O. You know. Many different stuff. Here I found more. There's much more here. This is the Ka. QA. As you see here. You know. Same thing. Ka. Ancient Hebrew. Sha. Sha's right here. As you see. And then the Ta. Right here. Okay. The T A, which is this, and then there's a Tha, which is this. Tha, T H A, which is right here. Now the the white man made this to make them seem like savages, but as you see, I just showed you a couple of consonants they kept. Overall, they made it seem like they're savages, but they're really not. You try to make them seem, but as you see, there's many Hebrew consonants that they kept. So the provings ain't no damn, you know. So it says, Burns says that the secret writing of the Incas consisted of ten consonants in a similar manner to many ancient languages, such as the Hebrew. Damn. Uh, also, like the Hebrew... Or other esoteric scripts, a numerical value could be associated with a letter and a letter with a numerical value. That's Hebrew. That's plain Hebrew. So that that proves that they use Hebrew. That they had a Hebrew uh, language. That they spoke Hebrew. That they had had a Hebrew alphabet. But the white man, like I said, the white man comes in and distorts everything. Okay, the first to broach this possibility was Bishop Las Casas, who spent much of his long life in the New World, in the New World, and wrote a number of invaluable accounts. Invaluable meaning they showed the truth that they were Hebrew Israelites, so therefore they're not valuable. Invaluable accounts of the Indians and their customs. See, when the Spaniards reached the main land of South America and conquered the kingdom of Peru they were again disposed to look for evidence that the Peruvians were of Jewish origin in 1607 Gregorio Garcias expressed the view that the first inhabitants of the Americas had been Jewish it says scholars now begin to approach the problem from a scientific point of view, drawing upon the old customs, uh, uh, Slakia, drawing upon the old accounts of the first voyages, explorers, and missioners, missionaries, they noted ma many parallels in basic religious tenets, including a belief in a life after death, in religious customs, in the organization of the priesthood, in prophecies. And dream interpretation, and religious sacrifices, and in the appointment of a day of rest, a Sabbath. Similar features could be also found in the myths of the myths of the Indians and the ancient Hebrews. Okay, so from the book Origins of the American Indians.
by Lee Eldridge Huddleston. Alright, so page, one more page, 71. Oh, here's a good one. This is a killer. Uh, actually, the Indians did appear to keep certain parts of the law in certain areas. The Incas, tribe of Asher, held a festival in March similar to the Passover. The Yucatecan Indians, which is in Mexico, tribe of Issachar, practiced circumcision. Mexicans and, in and Incas had eternal altar fires. Some Nicaraguans, which is the tribe of Zebulon, from uh, Guatemala to Panama, uh, Nicaragua, El Salvador, Costa Rica. Some Nicaraguans would not allow women who had recently given birth into the temples. That's in the law. That's 100% in, in the law. Mosaic law. Other parts of the law observed at various places included those which said that men should not sleep with women who had recently given birth. That's in the law as well. You're not supposed to sleep or, or, or be near a woman when she has given birth. It depends if uh, uh, the days differ if it's a boy or girl. It says, adulteresses were to be stoned. <laughs> that's, yo man, that's uh, Leviticus 20. You know? I'm going I'm to show adulteresses were to be stoned. He sheweth his word unto Jacob, his statutes, and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Showing that these are Israelites, a view on the, of the American Indians, Israel Worsley. Page, page 84. It says, lacked, meaning scholar, in his de description of South America, assures us that he often heard the Indians repeat the word hallelujah. And Malvenda states that the natives of St. Michael had tombstones with ancient Hebrew characters upon them. Page 145. It says, this is a big story, so, you know, i got to read it. Um, on the 18th of August, in the year 1644, a very small book was published in Amsterdam with the title, The Gathering of Israel, first written in Dutch by Manasseh Israel, which is a so-called Jew, a Khazar and afterwards in Hebrew by Jacob, leader of the synagogue of that city for the benefit of the Jew generally, Jews generally. Aaron Levi, a Portuguese Jew, his account is as follows. He had been at Honduras, tribe of Zebulon, from whence he per proceeded to Papuan, perhaps Popayan, that is, he, that is, he says, to Quito, which is in Ecuador. So we go from Zebulon, so you've been to, from Zebulon, from the tribe of Zebulon, to the tribe of Asher in Ecuador, where he hired where he hired mules of span of a Spaniard to go into the country and took with him a guide who was called Francisco. Falling into conversation with his guide, he found him to be one of the original natives of America. It says Aaron's curiosity was much excited to know more of these people. Um and learning from his guide that some of them wore very long beards others short and they observed the rite of circumcision as they proceeded Francisco made the inquiries made many inquiries about Aaron's friend and origin. He asked him if he knew who was his original ancestor, to which Aaron replied yes. His name was Abraham and added that he believed in one 
and one God that is in heaven. So the so-called Jews said, that's my God, and yeah, blah, 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 bullshit. On the Sabbath day, they rested, and after two days' journey more, they arrived at the bank of a larger river, much larger than the Duro. His guide then said to him, here you will find your brethren. So the true Israelite, which is a native, he said to the so-called Jew, here you'll find your brothers who are Israelites, because he thinks he's, he's a real Jew, which he's not. Um, his, his account of the people is that their countenance were much burned by the sun as they were of a fine, tall, straight stature. Figure, my bad. Many with beards. And that they wore on their heads a kind of turban.